Aloha New Hope Kauai. If you're watching right now, let's all worship and praise the Lord and Lords and King of Kings. Here we go. Woo! Love the Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. With all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. Woo! Oh yeah! I will love you. I will love you. With all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength, I will love you, Lord, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. I will love you. I will love you, Lord, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. I will love you, Lord, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's keep on praising him. He deserves all the glory, all the praise. He came to live live a perfect life he came to be the living word of life he came to die so reconciled came to rise to show his power and mind that's why we praise him that's why we sing that's why we offer him our Worship this king, cause he gave it everything. Yes, he gave his everything. Yes, he did. Let's praise him. He deserves all the glory. He came to live, live again in us. He came to be the conquering king and friend. He came to heal and show the lost ones his love. He came to go, prepare our praise to go. That's why we praise him. That's why we sing. That's why we offer him our everything. That's why we bow down and worship this king. Cause he gave his everything. Yes, he gave his 
everything yes he did let's praise him like an angels do come on sing hallelujah Cause he gave his everything Yes, he gave his everything Yes, he did So we love you, Lord Amen, amen, amen. yes Yes, Lord, we praise and worship you every single day Because you have given everything And we just worship you and we know that you're going to do miracles with everything that's going on. And we just, why don't you just worship him today? If you're watching right now, you just stand up and just praise him and worship him because he's amazing. Let faith arise In spite of what I've seen Lord, I believe But help my belief I choose to trust you No matter what I feel Let faith arise Let faith arise for my champion's not dead, he is alive Cause he already knows my every need Surely he will come and rescue me You're the God of miracles Let faith arise And see the kingdom come I lift my eyes For no battle has been won My God is faithful and every single word he said is true Cause God of miracles come We need your supernatural love To break through Nothing's impossible You're the God Miracles This world is changing But you cannot be shaken My heart is breaking But I'm not broken yet Your love is fearless Help me to be courageous there's nothing impossible this world is shaking but you cannot be shaken my heart is breaking but i'm not broken yet your love is fearless help me to be courageous too because 
there is nothing impossible Cause God of miracles come We need your supernatural love To break through Nothing's impossible You're the God of miracles If you're watching it right now, let me hear you sing right now Cause God of miracles come We need your supernatural love To break through Nothing's impossible You're the God of miracles Yes Lord, we just thank you for everything you're about to do Lord God, we thank you for miracles. We thank you for healing. We thank you for everything that you have done and will do in the future. And that's how we praise and worship you every single day. We pray for the message. We pray for the messenger. And we pray that this message that we're going to be hearing will touch each and every one of our hearts. And we promise to give you all the praise and all the glory and all God's people say, Amen. social media, Facebook and Instagram, and also don't forget to stop by our website, nhkawaii.com. You'll find the latest updates and information. Check out our Kehi page. Uh, you can also submit your prayer request, and you can give through our website. You can also give through our PushPay app, or you can mail in your tithes and offerings to P.O. Box 279, Kapa'a Hawaii 96746. Now let's pray for our tithes and offerings. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for being our provider, Lord. We humbly bring these tithes and offerings before your feet. We ask that you bless them and multiply them and use them in whatever way you see fit to glorify your kingdom and your name. In the perfect and matchless name of Jesus Christ, amen. Now don't go anywhere. We have a quick update from Pastor Matt. Aloha everybody, I just want to give a little update about us reopening the church. You know, I really don't like the word reopening. You know why? Because we never closed. So we're talking about coming back together uh, live in person at a service. Again now, the DOE will make the final decision. I know that schools are going to open up on August 4th, but we're still waiting for permission to use a school facility. In the meantime, you know, we've been trying to look for places to meet and all of that, but the mandate in, in Hawaii says that an indoor meeting can be only 50 people, 50 people. And so, you know, our morning prayer uh, meeting with our volunteers and uh, if you've been to some of those, man, it's like our first service where we pray and everything and that's what I miss the most. Uh, Spirit of the Lord moves and people get healed. But sometimes it's that morning circle where we pray before our first service with the volunteers. It's larger than 50. Sometimes we get like 60 something, almost 70 people in that morning circle. So, you know, we're, we're kind of tossing it around. Uh, would it be worth it for our leadership and our volunteers to come so early in the morning and the day before and we still live to 50. So we started looking for outdoor venues because outdoor we can have a hundred. You know, like Lidgate Park would be perfect, but that's still not open. Uh, we wanted to go back to the Sheraton and under the tent where we have our midweeks. That would have been great too, but they're not ready to open yet. If you hear anything about some outdoor venue that's that out there that we, we haven't um, looked at yet, let us know and maybe we can try to hold a, a service but then again that's limited to 100 would have to do the sign up reservation thing that a lot of churches are doing and on the mainland you met you might have just read this article certain states are now saying even though you're meeting in church you cannot sing and that's not just directed to christians but it's for all faith belief system uh, they said you cannot chant because uh uh, it has been proven in the laboratory that the droplets go farther when we sing. Even when we talk out loud, even preachers gotta make sure we stand uh, farther back from the first row. So, cannot sing and all of that. But hey, let me tell you one thing about worship. 
Worship doesn't mean that we just come on Sunday and we worship. Worship should be every day in our households and in our homes. We can worship the Lord whenever we want. If society wants to quiet down our worship and singing, we can do it whenever we want. And that's what we've been doing. And then you watch our online services, which has been doing great, by the way. Um, if the viewership is uh, times 2.5 on the average, man, we've almost doubled, getting close to triple the amount of people that would otherwise come live on a Sunday. Isn't that just great? And those of you who filled out the survey, thank you so much because that really helped us. Not everybody was chomping at the bit like some of us to get back to a live service. Uh, if you have young children, I totally understand. You wouldn't want to take a chance yet. And then some of us kupunas that are older and with health issues, we would not want to just come back into that situation because as you notice, there's a possible second wave. You know, when we went 10 weeks with zero on Kauai, I was like, wow, it's about to turn and we're gonna open again um, live. But then now we're starting to see more cases. So in light of that, we wanna stay safe. And then we wanna submit to those in authority. Pray for our president, our vice president, pray for our governor Ige and Senate President Ron Kochi and your district, you know, representative. And I, I pray for Jimmy Tokioka because that's my friend. And of course, pray for our mayor, Derek Kawakami because we want to submit and come under that authority in obedience to God, because that is the jurisdiction we are under. If we was in China and we lived in China, we forced to follow the Chinese government rules, but we're a citizen of the kingdom because in China, it's mandatory that women get an abortion if they're going to have their second child. Those are things that we cannot submit to because that will be causing us to sin. But in our government in the United States, they're not asking us to break God's law. They're asking us to be safe with common sense and to be wise. So that's what we're gonna do. So in the meantime, keep praying. We're hoping that once school returns, we'll be able to come back into the school facility. In the meantime, please know that our leadership is always looking for an opportunity, but online services has been so great that the Lord has taken this I was just in a zoom meeting this morning with people from all around the world top leaders great leaders and they said this is the movement of getting the gospel to all four corners of the earth so that everyone would get an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ so let your friends let your family know even if they're on the mainland I get family on Oahu telling me why oh, I get to come to your church finally without paying all of this money and going to the hotel or renting car Pass the word, go on to nhkoi.com, Christian or non-Christian, amen. I'm working on one other Boo2 TV segment. It was gonna be about reopening, but uh, I gotta think it over again. So thank you for tuning in. Just a quick update, keep praying for us, okay? We love you, God bless you, miss you all. See you Sunday online, aloha. Aloha everybody, Brother Preston here. I want to welcome you once again. Thank you for joining us. Hey, if this is your first time, then as always, we want to say welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us. We are so excited, so honored that you have chosen to spend some time with us. And before I get into the message, I know that, that many, uh, many of us were hoping that by this time, we would be meeting up again in the sanctuary, having, having in-person services, okay? And I want to let you know that the decision to postpone in-person services was not an easy decision that was made by our leadership, okay? It weighed heavy on their hearts. I know it did. And during a time, during a season where leadership is so difficult, leadership is so challenging, and really where leadership is just met with, with criticism after criticism, I really want to take a quick moment today to really acknowledge, to honor, and, and to thank the leaders of New Hope Kauai. Come on, can you help me do that today? Can, can you blow it up in the chat? Can you say thank you pastors, Pastor Matt, Pastor Moki, Pastor Jeremy, Pastor Franco, Auntie Allison, the, the council, the fractal, the, 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 the E-team, the different ministry leaders. Can, those of you who are doing your very best in such an uncertain season to lead 
with a heart of excellence. Listen, we don't say this enough. Like, we definitely don't say this enough, okay? But we appreciate you. We honor you. Okay, we definitely love you. And we say thank you. If you cannot tell, church, I'm pretty pumped up this morning. Pretty pumped up. Pretty excited to share with you what God has put on my heart. Excited to share with you what he has been revealing to me in the word. And, and I actually was going to preach on something different today, originally. But, but not too long ago, the spirit started to, to stir something new in me. Started to stir a new word in me. And um, I got to tell you, I've been praying, church. I've been praying. And I am believing that if you receive this word today, then there will be breakthrough in this area of your life. I mean that if you receive this word, there will be breakthrough, chains will be broken, barriers will be broken, lives and relationships will be restored, and you will never be the same again. I believe that. I hope you receive that. Let's pray. Pulikako. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again for today, Lord. We need you. It's as simple as that. We need you every day, all day. So be with us, Lord. Speak to us in a mighty way today. Bring us a fresh revelation for this season. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We'll give you all the glory in his name. We all said, amen, amen. So back in March, when the uh, stay-at-home mandate, the stay-at-home order was first given, what it really did was it forced me and my family to, to come up with new ways of entertainment or to bring back old ways of entertainment. And one of the old ways that we brought back and, and maybe you did too, check this out, was doing puzzles. Okay, we, we love doing puzzles in the Lingaton household. We do a, for real, puzzle after puzzle after puzzle. I love the, uh, the challenge of doing a puzzle. I love the, the reward of completing a puzzle. There's just something fun about taking a puzzle made up of 25 pieces or 50 pieces, 100 pieces, maybe 500 pieces, or if you're really good, right, 1,000 plus pieces, and trying to piece the puzzle back piece by piece to, to recreate what the creator originally created. Love doing puzzles. Love doing puzzles. But if I'm honest with you today, there is, there is one part about doing puzzles that um, I can't stand, okay? And that is not being able to finish them. And more specifically, going through the whole process of putting the puzzle back together only to realize at the end that you can't finish it because you're missing a piece. Ain't nothing worse than missing a piece, right? You see, the puzzle could be, it could be 99% complete, or it could be even 99.9% .9 complete, but it will never be 100% complete without the missing piece. I mean, almost, but not quite. Actually, without the missing piece, the puzzle is actually incomplete. Without the missing piece, the puzzle will, will, never, will never be what it was intended to be. Without the missing piece, the puzzle will never be what it was created to be. I mean, without the missing piece, the puzzle will never look like what it was created to look like. And so missing a piece is actually a problem. Because the puzzle, it wasn't created to be missing a piece. You know, I think a puzzle is the perfect analogy to describe our lives. We're made up of many parts, many feelings, many emotions. And we will never look like what God created us to look like if we're missing peace. Now, I'm not talking about the piece like a puzzle piece or like the piece of a pie, right? I'm talking about the piece in your heart. What is peace? Peace is an internal calmness despite external chaos. 
Peace is being still in here when it is uncertain out there. Peace is finding rest in, in the midst of a world that is restless. That's what peace is. Listen, I don't know what you're going through today, but the Spirit has put it on my heart that there are many of you who, in some area of your life, you are missing peace. Maybe the peace in your finances or in your family is missing. Maybe the peace at your job or in your health is missing. Maybe the peace in your friendships or your relationships is missing. Maybe the effects of this pandemic or, or the recent travel quarantine being lifted or even the, the resurgence and the second wave of COVID-19 cases has caused you to, to lose your peace. Or, or maybe the recent societal pressures and the pressures of social injustice and social inequality has caused you to lose your peace. Okay, whatever it is, because your peace is missing, it's starting to pull you down, it's starting to, to tear you down, and it's starting to wear you out. And for many of you, because you can't find it, you're saying, you know what then? Forget it. I don't need it. I don't need peace. But if that's you today, then, then I want you to think about something for just a minute, all right? Just, just think about this, church. If we weren't going through problems, then there would be no need for peace. I mean, think about that. If you weren't facing pain and panic, peace would be unnecessary. If you weren't facing pressure and paranoia, peace would be unneeded. Okay, if, if we weren't going through this pandemic, then there would be no need for peace. So, so the good news then, church, the good news is that if you are going through problems and pain and pressure and, and, and panic and paranoia, then guess what? You qualify for peace. Peace is within your reach. But here's the real question, right? Although we qualify for peace, why is peace so elusive? Although we qualify for peace, why does peace feel so difficult to acquire, so difficult to attain, so difficult to catch? I mean, I know it's a fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5, and 23, and the Spirit becomes a part of us the moment we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior, right? So if that's the case, then, then why as a believer, why as believers, why is peace so often missing from our lives? Hey, this is the question that I hope for us to answer today. And in Matthew chapter 10, Jesus is preparing to send out his disciples to share the gospel. And he's being very honest with them about the challenges and the problems and the pain that they're going to face. Okay? He's not sugarcoating anything. He's telling them that if you're going to follow me, if you're going to share the gospel, then you're going to be met with a bumpy road filled with, with pushback and, and setback. And then starting in verse 34, Jesus says something to the disciples that is so important for the answer we seek today. All right, so let's take a look. Scripture this, scripture this morning, Matthew chapter 10, starting in verse 34. Jesus says this to the disciples. After telling them about all the pain and the struggles and the challenges they're going to face, then he says, oh, and, and, and by the way, <laughs> one more thing. He says, do not suppose... I have come to bring peace to the earth. He says, I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. Verse 35, for I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. In other words, Jesus is saying in verse 35, that because of him, there would be a, a split. There would be a division within the same family. Jesus is saying that because of him, there would be division within the same household. He's saying that because of him, there would be division within the same home. And, and isn't this really 
what we see happening in our homeland of America right now. There's division everywhere we look. You turn on the news, there's division. You check your, your social media, there's division. Political division, economic division, racial division. And we shouldn't be surprised because here we see Jesus is warning us. He's foretelling us that division was going to come, that because of him there would be a distinction between right and wrong that would cause division. He's telling us that because of him there would be a distinction between good and evil, righteousness and wickedness that would cause division. Okay, Jesus is warning us that because of him there would be a distinction between justice and injustice that would cause division. This is certainly the world we live in. It's filled with division. But what I want us to really focus on today is verse 34, right? Let's take a look again. Again, Jesus says this to the disciples. He says, do not suppose or don't, don't, don't think or don't believe that I have come to bring peace to the earth. He says, I did not come to bring peace. Let me read that again. He says, I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. Now, church, when I first read this, okay, it messed me up big time. Okay, because think about it. Uh, Jesus, the Prince of Peace, is saying he didn't come to bring peace. What? What? That don't make sense. That's like the mailman saying he didn't come to bring your mail. It don't make sense. Peace is not what Jesus does. Peace is who he is. And so if that's the case, then why is Jesus, the Prince of Peace, telling us he didn't come to bring peace? But instead, a sword. A sword. A sword. Okay, hear me today, church. A sword is a weapon used in battle. And Jesus is saying, look, I came to bring you a sword because peace, if you want peace, if you're looking for peace, peace. Peace must be fought for. Mm. I said peace must be fought for. That's how we find it. We find it by fighting for it. We can't find it without fighting for it. Church, if you want peace, then you need to know today that you need to fight for peace. Now, now let me clarify, because I don't want you to misunderstand. Jesus is not advocating for violence. Okay, the Bible says, never repay evil with more evil. Instead, overcome evil with good. So we're not talking about physical fighting. We're talking about a spiritual fight. And when the Spirit first gave me this revelation, I said, okay, Jesus, I see the sword, but why specifically a sword? Why not a different weapon? Why, why a sword? Like, I would have preferred he gave a different weapon. Like maybe a, a bow and arrow. Because, you know, I'm an, I'm an archer. So I know that with a bow and arrow, I, I can shoot at things from a, from a distance. With a bow and arrow, I can shoot at things from, from far away. Like with a bow and arrow, I'm fighting, but I'm at a safer distance. But Jesus says, no, I came to give you a sword. Because peace is not something that you fight for from a distance. Peace is not something that you take shots at from long range. Okay, no, 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 no. Peace, church, peace requires hand-to-hand -hand combat. If you want peace, then you got to fight for it up close and personal. Now, before you panic, because I know some of you saying, but press, I'm a lover, not a fighter. Let me remind you, church, you and I, we were made to fight. Okay, here it is. You and I were created to fight. We were born to fight. We are professional fighters. That's what we do. We, we, we fight, and then God's, God gives us a season of rest. It's not the other way around. 
We, we don't rest and then God gives us a season of fighting. We are full-time fighters. The, the Apostle Paul puts it this way. He says, fight the good fight. And, and I know that if you want to be victorious in a fight, then you need to prepare a fight plan. If you want to be victorious in a fight, then you need to prepare a game plan. And, and really, what better way for us to prepare a game plan to fight for peace than by looking at the game book? Because remember, Ephesians chapter 6 reminds us that the sword is God's word. So Jesus has also brought us a sword to remind us that we fight for peace by using God's word. Amen? Really quickly, I want to give you a three-step fight plan from the fight book that during this season has really helped me fight for peace. And I believe again, church, if you receive it today, it's going to help you fight for your peace as well. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Step one in our fight plan for peace, identification. Identification. What do I mean by that? I think, I think many times we fail to recognize that our peace is missing, not because it's lost, but because it's been stolen. And in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 10, it says that the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. That the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And the fact that the enemy is described as a thief and that to steal is the first thing mentioned tells me that he doesn't need to kill or destroy if he can just steal. Oh, and make no mistake about it, the enemy wants to steal and rob you of your peace. Because he knows that he doesn't need to kill or destroy your marriage. He can just steal the peace between you and your spouse. He doesn't need to kill or destroy your job if he can just steal the peace at your workplace. He doesn't need to kill or destroy your money. He can just steal the peace in your finances. And so you and I, church, we need to become experts at identification. We need to become experts at identifying what the enemy is using to steal our peace. Because we cannot effectively fight against something we have not clearly identified. So, so what is he using? Is he using paranoia and panic to steal your peace? Is he using perfection or maybe procrastination to steal your peace? Is he using comparison to steal your peace? Is he using insecurity to steal your peace? Or is he using the opinions of others to steal your peace? Okay, church, you need to know so that you know what to pray for, you know what to pray against, and so that you know the type of environment, the type of situation, the type of people, or even the type of device to look out for and to stay away from. Okay, the first step in our fight plan for peace is to identify what's stealing it. Amen? Step two in our fight plan for peace, initiation. Initiation. Psalm 34 verse 14 says, turn away from evil and do good. It says, seek peace and pursue it. And pursue it. Okay, Jesus gave us a sword because it's an offensive weapon. Because if we want peace, then we need to take the initiative and pursue peace. This is what Jesus said. This is what he meant when he said, blessed are the peacemakers. Okay, to, to, to make peace is to pursue peace. Peacemakers take the initiative and go after peace. Peacekeepers sit back and wait for peace. Okay, you see the difference? One pursues, the other is passive. And the enemy wants us to be passive about peace, but Jesus wants us to pursue peace. So, so this means then that if the peace is missing in your health, then take the initiative and go see your doctor or diet and exercise. If peace is missing in your finances, then take the initiative and budget, get some financial advice. 
Okay, if peace is missing in, in your friendships, then call your friend up so you can squash whatever misunderstanding is between the two of you. If peace is missing in your marriage, then husbands, take the initiative and go say you're sorry. If peace is missing in your, in your ohana, then parents, take the initiative. Get your kiki together for a ho'oponopono so you can get to the bottom of it. Okay? Let, let's not just sit back and, and be passive and, and wait for peace to, to magically appear. We need to take the initiative and pursue. Amen? Identification, initiation. Step three in our fight plan for peace. And th this might be the most important step, church. Submission. Submission. Ten months ago, back in September, two months before the first recorded case of COVID-19, I preached a mini-series titled, Tap Out or Nap Out. And it was a very prophetic word. It was a very spirit-led word because it was preparing us for the season that we would soon enter. And in part one, tap out, I argued that the essence of Christianity is not salvation, but rather submission. I said that we can choose to be saved by Jesus in an instant, but we need to choose to submit to God every single day. That submission is a choice. And that we have a choice over our actions and our decisions, but we don't have control over the outcome because control is God's job. If you're missing peace, okay, chances are that it has to do with an area of your life or, or with something in your life that you are trying to control. You see, the enemy, he wants us to try and control because he knows that God didn't create us to control. Oh, let me say that again. I said God didn't create us to control. He created us to trust. And Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6 says to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, submit to Him. Mm. Submission is a display of trust. The, the book of Isaiah says that God will keep in perfect peace those whose, whose minds are steadfast. Why? Because they trust in him. Okay? Trust is the secret weapon in this fight for peace. Because church, up until this point, you fighting. Oh, but once you submit and trust, now God fighting. And, and what we need to be aware of and we need to recognize is that any area of our lives that we don't submit to God or we don't trust God with, those areas, those things, they become enemy-occupied territory. Okay, make no mistake about it, church. Don't be fooled. Either God has it or the enemy does. And, and when the enemy has it, that's when fear, worry, and anxiety steps in, and that's when peace steps out. So fight for peace by trusting in the Lord with all your heart and by submitting to Him in all your ways. Identification, initiation, submission. Okay, follow this fight plan. Church, follow this fight plan. It will help you find your peace. And I'll close with this. One day, my, uh, my daughter and I, we were doing this exact puzzle. And sure enough, as we got to the end, we were missing a piece. And so I told her, baby, you got to look for it, honey. You got to go find it. And so she searched and searched and searched and searched. She checked under the, the table, the dining room table. She checked under the couch. She checked, you know, in, in between the couch. She checked her playroom. She double checked the playroom. She, she looked everywhere. I was proud of her. She looked everywhere. Finally, she gave up. She said, Dad, I can't find it. She said, Dad, the piece is lost. She said, Dad, the, the piece, it's, it's missing. But you know, the whole time she was looking for it, I wasn't worried. <laughs> Usually this would stress me out. 
But the whole time she was looking for it, I wasn't stressed. Because what she didn't know was that the peace she was looking for, what my daughter didn't know was that the peace she thought was lost, the, 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 the peace that she thought was missing, it was in my hand the entire time. Don't laugh at my puzzle. If you're missing peace today, okay, please hear my heart. Hear me when I say, it is in the hand of your heavenly Father. And if you want to find it, then you need to first find Him. Because the peace of God comes to those who have a passionate desire to please God. Okay, the peace of God comes to those who have a passionate desire to be obedient to God. The peace of God comes to those who have a passionate desire to be in the presence of God. And Psalm 91 verse 1 says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. In the shadow, in the presence, will rest. Not, not be restless, will rest. To, to be restless is to be peaceless. And so to find rest is to find peace. And if you're missing peace, then find it in the shadow of the Almighty. Find it in the presence of the Almighty. Find it in the hand of the Almighty. Amen? Hey, I hope you received that today. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for again today. We thank you for this word, Lord. We thank you for this word. It is our daily bread. Lord, I humbly ask right now that you will, you will help us to fight, that you will give us the courage to fight, that you will give us the passion to fight for the peace that's missing in our lives. Lord, we want to identify, we want to take initiative, and then we want to submit and trust you with the rest of it. So we thank you again for your son, Jesus. We give you all the glory in his name. And we all said, amen. Hey, church, one last thing, one last thing. Okay, hear me, this is important. As we fight for peace, okay, understand, you're going to lose some fights. <laughs> you can catch some lickings once in a while. You, you can catch some lumps, okay, that's life. You're going to lose some rounds. You're going to be fighting your, your heart out, and it's not always going to turn out. It's not always going to come out. Okay, you're going to be fighting like crazy, and chances are high that you're going to get hurt. All right, but be encouraged today. Don't give up. Don't stop because there is hope, there is peace, and his name is Jesus. Amen. Hey, God bless you. We love you. Peace. Thank you so much for joining us, and we hope to see you again next week. Have a wonderful weekend. Aloha. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. With all your strength Love the Lord your God With all your heart With all your soul With all your mind With all your strength